Feed me jewelry. Feed me your jewelry. Okay. Okay, welcome to Tomorrow Lab. This is the teardown where we tear down things. <laughs> We're back upstairs. We'll show you some updates on the fourth floor later. Got a laser cutter. <laughs> what do we got today? Today we are going to take apart an ultrasonic jewelry cleaner by Magnasonic, the biggest name in ultrasonic jewelry cleaning. Who would usually own one of these? I think someone who has a lot of jewelry. Does Snooky have a lot of jewelry? Is Snooky still alive? I would feel bad so, if Snooky was dead. Well, the, the Jersey Shore is coming back on oh. air. I don't know if she'll be on it. A, it has a tray. You put your jewelry in it. Mm -hmm. And as a, I guess as a summary, by ultrasonically vibrating the water, it's going to clean the jewelry, loosen all the dirt that comes off. I don't totally know what's involved in this, so I'm really looking forward to opening this up. I want to know where is the ultrasonic wave generated from. Mm -hmm. We think it might be something called the piezo or piezo crystal. Yes. Um, and then there should be some kind of method of like transferring that energy into the tray. Before we tear it apart, let's demo it. Okay. We don't have much jewelry. I have my wedding ring. I don't want to put it in this thing. I don't have anything but a watch. But we do have some crappy looking tools. Yeah. I have some water here. Okay. Let's put it in. I'm going to stick the tip of this gnarly looking wrench into this bath here. Let's turn it on. Okay. Oh, that's Ooh. a horrible noise. So small bubbles are showing up on the surface. Just a little bit. So in this case, we're moving the edges of the container of water. That's putting the bubbles. Just like new. <laughs> and the agitation produces high forces on the contaminants adhering to substrates like metals, plastics, glass, rubber, ceramics. The benefit is that it also can penetrate little holes and cracks. Oh, so, which is great for jewelry. Yeah. All right, should we take this apart? Yeah, let's take it apart. So we have this apart, we have uh, AC power coming in, there is some kind of step down circuit, we've got a relay, there's a fuse over here, there are these two big transistors hooked up to massive heat sinks, mm -hmm. and then there's this control panel over here. Let's run this. I'm wearing safety gloves. Oh. So, okay, here we have our transducer, you can hear it running, it's over here. Is this circuit basically just generating a waveform which is piped up these two wires. Yeah. So there's ultrasonic in terms of speed. Right. That's a Concord. And then there's ultrasonic in terms of sound, which is higher than we can hear. Right. And so anything above 20,000 hertz is officially ultrasonic. So we have a, a multimeter which is measuring the AC switching frequency and just putting it on the port to the transducer. We're getting around 18 kilohertz which makes Almost sense. spot on, yeah. So this is actually not quite an ultrasonic cleaner, but mm -hmm. it's getting close. This technology you can find in other products like um, ultrasonic toothbrushes. There are much smaller versions of this and there are even small ICs that <laughs> handle all of that. All right, let's unplug this thing and I want to pry that off to see what that's made out of. Cool. Boom. That's how you should have started this out. Cool. Nice. All right, so 
That's our big boy. And here's our little guy. Yeah, so real quick demo. Uh, again, the concept of the piezo can be run in either direction, meaning that we can either put a voltage in in order to get it to deform, or we can deform this and it will produce a voltage. So we're gonna just demonstrate the latter um, by putting a multimeter across these two poles. Pepin's gonna flick it. Uh, I guess, can you flick it more lightly? <laughs> there we go. And you can see on the display that every time he flicks it, there's a voltage created. Red, black. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, higher. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. This element is a piezoelectric crystal. What's unique about the crystal is that it has both positive and negative charges in it, but they are balanced. However, when I introduce a positive charge on one side and a negative charge on the other, what happens is the actual crystal deforms. It physically deforms. Oh, cool. Not a lot. Just not a lot. A teeny tiny bit. But a little bit. And so in this case, we can take advantage of that. If we very quickly introduce the positive and negative charge on either side, we're able to flex this material, which since it's bonded to the metal pan, the metal pan flexes at that mm. speed. Then the water is moved and we get the ultrasonic uh, excitation of the water. And then from there, what happens is along the dirty surface of jewelry or tools, we have what's called cavitation that uh, forms. So those are small voids, which may be air bubbles or just sort of the presence of, uh, of low pressure. And as that approaches the surface, it implodes. The water is forced into the surface. And then you have a small release of the dirt into the water. It's pretty amazing. Wow. A whole new world. Yeah. Great, guys. Cool. Well, this was fun. Yeah. Uh, if you like this, remember to like and subscribe. Leave comments on what we should tear down next. I think in the next couple weeks, we should get uh, some guests in here. Yes. Yeah. Crystal, if you're watching this, come on our show. Hi, Crystal. <sighs> also, we might do some weirder teardowns like design teardowns of boxes, kind of more of a how it's made thing. Mm -hmm. Let us know below if you are interested in that. <laughs> cool. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.